Bowman versus Topps. Today, you might know Bowman and Topps from their different brands of baseball cards. You might be going out there collecting at first Bowman Chrome Autos or Topps flagship rookie cards. So in today's video, we're going to be going over the rivalry between Topps and Bowman in the 1950s, and you'll never believe how it ends. You get my message. The rivalry between Bowman and Topps is kind of like where it is today between Topps and Panini. But let's go back all the way to the beginnings of both these companies to see where they really come from. So first off, let's talk about Bowman. Bowman was produced originally in 1927 and Topps came about 10 years later. And these companies just focused on creating gum. See, gum was the commodity back in the day. Kids absolutely loved it. It was one of their favorite candies. That's all. That's all. Don't you know what this is? My gum, it's gum. Wrong. It's the most amazing, fabulous, sensational gum in the whole world. And some of the different gum companies, the first one being Gaudi in 1933, decided to sell baseball cards with the gum so that way kids would buy more gum. And this worked out really, really good for the Gaudi company. Many of you guys know that 1933 and 34 Gaudi sets, some of the most classic cards of all time, came because of chewing gum. Now, Bowman wanted to get into the baseball card market, but unfortunately during the 30s, it was the Great Depression. But in 1939, the Great Depression ended and Bowman made their famous play ball set. So I actually didn't know this before researching this. It was from 1939 to 41. We're all created by Bowman, and uh, it wasn't 48, the first Bowman set. So, so sometimes researching, you learn new things. Anyways, uh, play ball was created 39 through 41 and included many of the stars of the day. You had Joe DiMaggio in there, you had Ted Williams, you had Mel Ott, you also had Jimmy Fox, and it was a really, really star-loaded uh, lineup for those three years. However, 1942, World War II started. So end of 41, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, and then we moved over to 1942, the U.S. is in the war. So here's the thing about the war. There's paper rations. So all these trading companies in the 30s could no longer produce cards. So Bowman was crippled and same with the Gaudi Gum Company. So no more producing cards. However, 1948, trading cards came back once again and Bowman released the flagship baseball set, you know, the black and white cards. And later that year also, another company would come out called Leaf. And Leaf only produced cards in 48 and 49, but they tackled many sports between baseball, boxing, and football. And you can see what a Leaf card looks like right here. I picked up the Stan Musial at the card show this weekend in Miami, and you will find a link down below of this card show. Really fun, but I finally picked up this Musial rookie. Anyways, not to be fully off track here, uh, Bowman had the monopoly in the market, give it in 1950, and Topps was still producing gum at this time and decided to go into the baseball card market. So in 1951, that's what they did. And they started producing a few different sets. One of my favorites is right here, the 1951 Topps Red and Blue Backs. This is a Duke Snyder that I picked up recently, also at the Miami Card Show. Really love the eye appeal on this. And if you don't know, Blake Jameson also made a set this year and uh, redid it for modern players. You should definitely check it out. I like the 51 design. Really, really fun. Anyways, so in 51, Topps started competing with Bowman. But to avoid a lawsuit, they decided to put Taffy in with their cards instead of gum. Now, Taffy didn't work out so well, so Topps goes back to gum in 1952, but this is the start of the Topps run versus Bowman. Now, at the time, Bowman and Topps were both signing players to individual contracts. Topps was offering $125 to players. They were exclusive to Topps and $75 if they weren't exclusive. Bowman was offering $100 a year, so players were going out there and now signing between Bowman and Topps. Flash forward one more year and a lot more is happening. Now it's 1952. Topps releases their iconic set, the one with the mantle, the million dollar card, and also other players such as like Eddie Matthews and Willie Mays. Everyone loves this card set. What, probably the most famous card set since World War II. Also what's happening at the same time is Bowman is now suing Topps because over the likeness of images and the publicity of images. So things are just starting to get heated. Only two years into this rivalry, there's already lawsuits over having gum with pieces of cardboard. So one more year later, 1953, Topps ends up winning their first lawsuit with Bowman. However, like all lawsuits out there, even today, Bowman appealed. <laughs> and the second uh, circuit court of appeals decided that Topps was guilty 
of causing certain players to breach their exclusive contracts. Without so Tops loses the first lawsuit. They tried appealing it to the Supreme Court, but no luck at all with there, and it's not looking good for Tops. 1954 comes around, and Tops makes a major move. They decide to sign the one and only Ted Williams, the Tops brand. However, at the same time, Tops loses the one and only Mickey Mantle. So now Bowman produces Mickey Mantle cards, whereas Tops now produces Ted Williams. So they flipped the biggest superstars in the game between the two different teams. And Tops also has the luxury of signing on some early on players. In 54 set, you have the Ernie Banks rookie. You also have the Al Kaline rookie. And you have the Hank Aaron rookie. All players did not have their rookie card in 1954 Bowman. So Tops is getting ahead with the rookie cards. They also just signed Ted Williams. And there's a lot of momentum flowing in their way. However, Bowman now gets Mickey Mantle from New York. So really interesting with that. And from the set in 54, Bowman actually started producing Ted Williams cards, which was a breach of the contract uh, Ted Williams had with Tops. So this card ended up getting halted from production. You can still find it out there today, but it's a baseball card that you are not supposed to own. Now flash forward to 1955, Tops once again dominates the market. They go out there and get the rookie cards of Koufax, Clemente, and Harmon Killebrew. Bowman has no rookie cards. Now where it really gets interesting is one year later, Bowman ends up selling over the tops. So tops purchased Bowman for $200,000 at the time, which today is slightly under $2 million. And what tops decides to do with Bowman is they decide to shelve the company. They no longer want Bowman to produce cards. So tops ended up going out there and reproducing Bowman once again in 1989. However, it was kind of a flop because they still use the older uh, size of cardboard and think about the nineties or even like the late eighties. Card supplies weren't there uh, readily for all this type of stuff. People were used to the standard size of cards, which Tops made in 1957, not the larger cards from 1989. So uh, these cards are getting damaged. These cards just aren't normal. And they decided to fix this in 1990 and go back to the standard size, uh, which Tops has done since 1957. Flash forward to today, Bowman is most known for their first Bowman cards. So once a player gets drafted out of high school or college or signs as a free agent, Bowman will go out there and produce first Bowman cards, which is like an unofficial rookie card. And now Tops is really known for their flagship rookie cards. So the two companies still have their purpose in the baseball card industry. Bowman is more for prospecting. Tops is more for the established rookie card. And they're both here today because Tops revitalized the brand. But this was the five-year war between Bowman and Tops. I hope you guys found this video fascinating. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below. And let me know what you want me to research for another video. Anyways, I'll catch you in the next one.